Spotting trailers with a Kalmar terminal tractor, the Ottawa, is easier and safer when you go by the book. And this video will help. Otto will show you how to make safety first, last, and always for you, the tractor, and the load. Note Otto's first caution. This video covers only the highlights. Your rule book for proper, sure operation is the Ottawa Operator's Manual. And as Otto says, real operators read their manuals and understand its contents by chapter and verse before they ever step into the cab. Checking the condition of your Ottawa is the first step you should take when you start your shift. Don't start driving until you've finished the simple walk-around inspection. From the front, look under the chassis to check for any leaks, radiator, engine, or hydraulic. Then check your tires to be sure they're properly inflated. As Otto points out, fluid leaks can leave you high and dry. Otto also says, keep up the pressure so you won't be let down. If any of these conditions exist, write them down for correction before you go on with your inspection. As you walk around to the side of your Ottawa that has the door to the cab, be sure to check the fluid levels in the hydraulic oil reservoir. The instruction labels are easy to read and the filler cap easy to reach. While you're there, pull the air tank lanyard to drain off any moisture that may have accumulated in the air tank. Check the battery cover to see that the cover fasteners are secure. Then check the rear tires for proper inflation. Also, check the top of the frame and fifth wheel boom area to make sure that they are free of any trash or debris. While we're on the subject of the boom, never, never put any part of your body under the fifth wheel boom when it is in the up position, unless the boom arms have been properly blocked against accidental lowering. As you come around to the right side, check the rear tires and the fuel tank. When refueling, be sure to heed Otto's warning. Never light up when you fill up. Oh, while you're there, be sure to pull the drain lanyard for the right side air tank. Now that you're at the rear of the cab, as Otto says, look under the deck to be sure the cab is locked down. To double check, depress the cab tilt switch momentarily to the down position. Also, look under the cab near the steering box to see that the cab lock bar is all the way down. With the safety guard in the proper down position, the cab is prevented from accidentally tilting. There is also a warning label with the cab tilt instructions located on the frame by the cab tilt switch. Remember, keep clear of the cab when raising or lowering. Should you need to tilt the cab, pull the safety bar prop release cable to the rear. While holding the cable, move the tilt control switch to the up position and hold until the safety bar prop clinks into the locked position. Never, never place any part of your body under a tilted cab without checking to be sure that the safety bar prop is in the locked position. When lowering the cab, just reverse the procedure. Note that the safety bar prop has a release lanyard which must be pulled prior to lowering the cab. When the walk around is complete, it's time to climb up and clean up. What you can't see can hurt you. So clean the windshield, the windows, make sure your mirrors are properly directed, and while you're out on the deck, lift the engine cover and pull the dipstick to check your oil. And check the sight glass on the radiator for proper coolant level. Don't forget Otto's warning about coolant checks. It's a high pressure system, so never remove the radiator cap if the engine is hot. When all of the inspections have been completed, it's time to get into the cab and start the engine. But first, check the floor and all around for any trash or loose items that could be a hazard. Sweep them out or stow them away. A clean cab is a safer cab. Before turning the ignition switch, make sure that the parking brake is set and the transmission shift selector is in neutral. Turn the ignition switch to the on position and check the wait to start light. When the light goes off, rotate the switch to start the engine. As soon as it starts, reduce your RPMs and immediately check your oil pressure. 
If none is indicated within 15 seconds, shut off the engine and find the problem. If the engine will not start after 30 seconds of starter rotation, switch off the ignition for a few minutes and allow the starter to cool off. Do not use starter fluid on an electronic engine. Check your engine operator's manual for details. No matter what the problem, never try to start an Ottawa by pulling or pushing. It just can't be done. Failure to disconnect the drive shaft or raise the drive wheels before pushing or towing could seriously damage the transmission. After you have started the engine, let it idle at about 800 RPM for five or six minutes. While the engine is warming and building up air pressure, check your gauges, switches, and controls for proper operation. Check the turn signals, lights, and windshield wipers, and adjust and lock your seat into the most comfortable position. Your Ottawa is equipped with seat belts. Fasten them. Before you can release the parking brake, the air pressure gauge must read at least 70 PSI. Apply the foot brake. The brakes are released by pushing down on the yellow button to your right. After releasing the parking brakes, move the shift lever from neutral to the appropriate drive gear and you're ready to move out. For more information on the proper gear selection and use of gears for engine braking, check the Ottawa operator's manual. Before attempting a change of direction shift, forward to reverse or reverse to forward, bring the vehicle to a complete stop before moving the shift selector. Your Ottawa gear shift lever has no P or park position. Every time you leave the cab, shift to neutral and set the parking brake. Never try to park while you are in a forward or reverse gear. Now let's go find a trailer. The following procedures are highly recommended but are provided only as a guide. Check your company procedure manual for specific guidelines, particularly if your Ottawa is equipped with any optional equipment not specifically covered in this video. And keep in mind that it is the operator's responsibility to be sure that proper trailer moving procedures and practices are followed. Also remember, there is only one seat in your Ottawa. That translates to no riders. Before backing up to the trailer, be sure that the fifth wheel is in the full down position. And be sure that the fifth wheel jaws are in the open or unlatched position. Depress the unlatch palm button just to make sure. While backing, line the tractor up to the front of the trailer by centering the fifth wheel to the center line of the trailer. Make sure that the tail of the fifth wheel is below the bottom of the trailer. Slowly back under the trailer until the entire fifth wheel top plate disappears under the trailer. With your foot firmly on the brake pedal and the transmission in neutral, using the boom control lever, raise the fifth wheel up until the trailer landing gear is just off the ground. Do not raise the trailer any further than to just provide adequate ground clearance at this point. With your foot still on the brake, shift into reverse. Release the foot brake and back firmly into the fifth wheel jaws until you feel full engagement. Now shift into a forward gear and give a little tug to make sure that the jaws have locked on the kingpin. Caution! Be ready to immediately apply the foot brake if a full lock of the kingpin has not been accomplished. With the fifth wheel and the kingpin securely locked together, shift into neutral and raise the trailer to the necessary height to maintain landing gear ground clearance. Set the parking brake by pulling up on both of the parking brake valves and hook both of the brake lines. Both. To release the parking brake system, firmly depress the brake pedal and push down on both the trailer air supply and the emergency parking brake controls. Shift the transmission selector into the proper gear and double check the brakes by depressing the brake pedal after moving a foot or so. Now we are ready to spot the trailer. With the trailer moved to the right location, stop, shift to neutral, and apply only the trailer brake. This will allow the Ottawa to move gradually as the trailer is lowered. Using the fifth wheel boom control, lower the trailer until the landing gear makes firm ground contact. Set the tractor emergency parking brake control. Then disconnect and store the brake lines. 
Now release the tractor emergency parking brake control, then depress and hold down the fifth wheel unlatch control as you slowly ease away from the trailer. Once the fifth wheel clears the kingpin, you can release the unlatch button and head to your next trailer spot. Just a few more things we want you to keep in mind. Your Ottawa is designed to move trailers for generally short distances and in somewhat confined areas. It is not designed to operate the same as a road tractor and shouldn't be driven like one. When hauling a trailer in the yard, speeds should not exceed 15 miles per hour. And since your Ottawa hauls loads with the front of the trailer in an elevated position, the load is not as stable as in road tractor operations. For your own protection and that of the equipment, do what Otto says. No fancy maneuvering when hauling an elevated trailer and no fast turns or jackrabbit starts. If you are driving a DOT EPA model, you must manually lock the kingpin locking jaws before operating on a public road. And you have to manually unlock the kingpin locking jaws before you can unhook the trailer. See your operator's manual for details. The real professionals know their tractor and are operators who have learned to handle their Ottawas with no pain to themselves and no strain on the tractor or the load. And it all happens when you put safety first last and always.